Good evening, and welcome to a special behind-the-scenes edition of the Sheila New Comedy Show. The following episode may contain language and subject matter that may not be appropriate for younger listeners. It is intended for adults only. You have been warned. Remember, you can listen to the Sheila New Comedy Show on 11 different platforms. We kindly request your support by visiting the tip jar to contribute to the show. Also note that we've added a special link on our link tree to recognize our contributing partners. You Think Indigo, Fabi Not TV, Energy Yoga and Meditation, Ron Winston Entertainment, and Laurel Hill Productions. Good evening, everyone. I am Ronald Dillard Jr., and I am here with the wonderful Wanda Rose and the always new Sheila New. Good evening, ladies. How you doing? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing all right. And what we're doing now, we're taking a, a moment to go behind the scenes of the Sheila New Show. We're going to talk about all kind of different things. But first of all, we want to talk about how the show initially got started, and we can't do that without talk without talking to Wanda Rose. So, Wanda, how did you come up with the initial idea? What was it that made you say, hey, this is something I want to do? Take us a behind that story. What happened? I think it started when we started. When I did the, we did a room one night from a book I have called Dating is for the Birds. And I think we had so much fun in the room. On a, We did it on, a, I think, two Sundays. We did one Sunday, and we had fun. And everybody was like, let's do it again. We did it again. And I think we had a lot of laughter, and it was a lot of fun. And once again, I saw Sheila's comedic relief. I also noticed we had Griff come on one night, and he talked about comedy. And I think Sheila, that's the first time she talked about her comedy, I think, a little bit that night. And then doing the book, I thought it was, you know, it was a lot of fun. And I challenged Sheila, saying, hey, when are you going to do something? And it started with that kind of teasing her. And I kind of thought, hey, when are you going to do a show? And then after that, I thought what that show might look like. And that's how we came up with the Sheila New Show. And then I thought about Ronald. Even before I went to Sheila, I think I asked Ronald. I said, hey, Ronald, I think this would be cool if you help us come up and participate in the show. And Ronald was like, I'm not funny. And I was like, Ronald, you are very funny. I saw him. And so that's how we came to be the Sheila New Show. And a couple of things is that just for those that are listening right now, the show that she was talking about was on an app called Clubhouse. And that's where we have the Sheila New Show before it comes to you in the platform of the podcast. Now, I was initially shocked by that because I thought that she had already had Sheila already lined up before she asked me. That's how I was thinking about it. I wasn't. But Sheila, take me back to when Wanda first approached you about how it sounded to you, what you thought about it, and then what ultimately made you see him say, you know what, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> Man, listen, when Wanda first asked me about it, like she said, when you going to do something? When you going to do a show? And I'm like, girl, go ahead now. <laughs> Ain't nobody doing no show. I'm like, because in my mind, as a stand-up comedian, you think about when you perform, it's live, right? You're in front of a live audience. You're in a club atmosphere, a theater-type atmosphere, something of that nature. So I'm like, number one, we don't even live in the same state you know what i'm saying so i don't even know how this is gonna look and i think she asked me a couple few times before i said okay wanda she said pick a date then and i was like okay let's do it on a friday because i was like 420 happens to be on a thursday don't ask me why that's significant but anyway <laughs> mind your business okay yeah you did say that i remember that and this was all via text messages too it right was- yeah and then i was like okay we'll do it on that friday and then we actually had a conversation. I said, okay, Wanda. I said, I'll do it, but I'm not even understanding how this is going to work out. Like, how is this going to look? Because this is not typically what I'm used to. And she said, oh, don't worry about that. <laughs> I'll take care of the, the semantics about everything. You just, as long as you're saying yes, I'm like, yeah, okay. And in my mind, it was just going to be a one and done type thing. Okay. Let me just do this one time. I went back and forth with it. And I'm like, all right. And then after the first show, you already know. Here we are. Ta-da. You know, I'm glad you, you, that's a good point. Because I remember when we were sitting there, I was like, okay. Because when we finished the first show, it was almost like being on on stage and performing. It was like you work to try to make sure everything goes smooth. Everything went smooth. I was like, we did it. It's done. This was fun. It was good. And then one was like, guess what? We're going to do another show. And I was like, who the hell said that? Cause I, I, was, <laughs> I don't remember that. I remember that. I was like, I, I was like, we are. I was like, I, I, was like, I thought we would just do this one right. time. Wanda is like, the ring leader. Yeah. yeah. Sheila knew one show. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but for me, it was a situation where I was like, listen, I love, I don't talk about this too much. Of course, when I'm on the clubhouse, I've been a lot of times talking about film and talking about it. I'm very serious about it. And it's only, it's because I have a sense of humor at the same time. I'm, I was more focused on being understood rather than being funny. I'm trying to take a joke because I have, I find, I have a sense of humor that ranges for all different levels. But it never makes, it never feels any better to make somebody laugh. And, when Wanda asked me about it, I was like, "Nah, I'm not, I don't think I'm the, I don't think I'm a right fit for it." She, you are funny. You are funny. I was like, "I'll give it a shot." The only reason I said yes was because I've said this before. I don't think I've ever said it get recorded. Jeff Daniels, when doing Dumber and Dumber, I remember he was talking about that Jim Carrey wanted an actor when the studio wanted another comedian, and he was like, "If it had been another comedian, he just would have tried. That comedian would just try to top. It would have been just going back and forth with them trying to top each other." But with an actor, you were just going to play the scene. And then for me, and good thing I, and good thing I did, because I've been, the, I've been the butt of a lot of jokes. So it's just like sometimes when the jokes get on top of me, it's like somebody just goes and jumps on the pile. Like, Ow! You know? oh my God. <laughs> yeah, me, I know. And, and for me, it's about, serving, it's about serving the scene and it's about serving the bit to make sure that it goes off really smoothly. And so what's it like doing the show for, for each of you? Well, can we go back? If you want to go back to a second, yeah. I don't know but, if I really thought it was going to be more than one episode. I think it just evolved. It just happened. No, um, no, ma'am. <laughs> but, no, but when I started, when I'm saying when I started, I don't okay. remember if I was thinking it was going to be more than one episode. Oh, because I was yeah. going to say after the first show, you was like, okay, pick a date for the second show. And I'm That's like, wait, so. what? She said, guess what, everybody? There's going to be a part two episode. But then she told me, pick a date. I said, hell, we've been doing the third. I said, we started off doing the third Friday in April. Mm -hmm. Let's just roll with the third Friday in May. And so that's how it began. Now, yeah. since April, here we are. Rolling, rolling like a son of a gun, but we up yeah. in here. Four episodes in, second season. Yeah, let's get it. Let's go. And so what is it like doing the show for you, ladies? So I remember, Wanda, we were talking about early on. It felt doing do live theater is something where it's like the day that you're going to do the show, it's almost kind of like you stay close, whatever, because you want to make sure that you're available, make sure nothing happens, make sure that you're at the theater on time, because you never want to be late. You never want anything to hinder you to be able to go in and do your best. Do you still feel that way, or what is it like for you doing a show when you started versus continue to do it now? I'll start. I still feel the same way. I feel like it's a day of a show. I feel like you've been preparing. And the day of the show, you always never want anything to go wrong. So usually when you're doing a, when I've done like live theater, the day of the show, we spend, if the show is at seven o'clock, we might be there at eight o'clock in the morning and we don't leave the theater. We just there. We might be rehearsing, setting up. We just don't leave. We're there all day. And it felt the same way that you don't want to, you want to get there early in your spot. So usually I want to be where I'm going to record at and I'll be there most of the day and try not to go out and just try to be in because you don't want anything to go wrong that day that could mess up that night. And if you're rehearsing, you just put in some quiet time and get, but that same excitement, that same, even though it's not a live audience, that same excitement, that same kind of adrenaline rush as you prepare and heightened sense of expectations as you're getting ready for a show. So it's been the same thing for me, pretty much every show. Yeah. What about you, Sheila? I was going to say, I'll echo that sentiment. I think there's a certain level of preparedness that you go through. And I liken it the same as I would prepare as if I were doing a live show. I take, <laughs> When I'm on the road, I take a nap to be rested because a lot of times you perform at night and then there's things to do afterwards. If I'm traveling and doing a show, I'm usually there the day before because you have to do a radio promo. So you're usually up at the old early 30 to get to do the spots and then maybe go grab something to eat, then go back to your hotel or whatever the case may be, take a nap and then wake up and just get it ready. Go back over the material to make sure that you're good. But in this instance, because we're all at our individual locations for me, it's like work and then after work, get my mind wind down. Everybody knows the rules of engagement. I put my phone on do not disturb because Lord knows I don't want no man in the middle because oh my God. 
thank you, Apple, for the Do Not Disturb <laughs> feature. So I definitely place that on. And then, too, I think it, it's just a routine. It's whatever habits you try to clear your mind. I don't necessarily get a nap in before the show, but I definitely make sure that I just meditate, get my mind. And then I actually have my youngest say a little prayer for all of us before we hit this app and get ready so that we can have a good show. So that's systematically what I do every third Friday to get prepared. And I'm excited. And the adrenaline still flows as if I was performing live. So that's always a good thing. So there's certain things that I have to go through to get my right to get the funny on. So yeah. But at the end of the day, it doesn't feel like work because it's something that I absolutely love to do. Yeah. And what about you, sir? First of all, I'm sorry to give the, I guess, the the starting of the room scares that I would give, because I think every room, I wouldn't get in there until maybe you start the room at 7.50, I wouldn't get into 7.57 or something. Because one was like, we're in the room, we're in the room. I was like, I know, I got into 8.05, because I'm getting, a lot of times I'll be getting my beverages over at the table, because for me, here's the thing. It's a, it, the more unified the that the more unified that I have everything scheduled to show to understand what we're doing, how it resonates, how to deliver it, whether it's being the announcer, whether it's doing a character voice, whether it is engaging with Sheila back and forth on topics, it's important for everything to be uniform. And for that to happen, like my drinks, I gotta have them on my table because I can't really leave to go pour another drink, <laughs> to go pour another cup of coffee because. I have to all have it all right there. So I'll be setting that up and then I come in and, well, and Wanda's like, we're in the room. We said it. <laughs> and I'm like, I got three songs. <laughs> the only I bad part it. of it is the fact I'll come in and be like, which song are we on? <laughs> which is, you really, if you had been there from Junk Street, you wouldn't have to ask that question. But I get on, which song, which song is this? I remember, I remember the first one, we said 805, we're going to start. And I remember a third song to stop and I was like, go ahead. <laughs> and I was like, I to do 805. And then I, was like, I okay, love we gotta, it. We gotta, okay, we got to get the truth. Whatever on. comes sooner if the third song Yeah, is, yeah. Yes. Okay, but she yeah. said, had your ass in the place so she ain't yeah. got I don't know why I have this vision of Ron not showing up one night. And so you I really know do. what? I really have this vision of Ron oversleeping because I know Ron <laughs> takes his naps. Ron is, <laughs> He's known for his naps. So I really have this vision every time that Ronald going to take a nap. Because oh, he always cut it close. He always cut it close. And I'm always telling <laughs> Sheila, you talk to Ronald? I'm texting her like I'm about to text Ronald. I think it, I don't think it, I think you showed up for the first show early. And after that, I've had to text, I text you every show after that, I think. Well, yeah, the interesting thing about it is that every show I always have woken, I always wake up. 15 to 20 minutes before the show and then get get the coffee going, get everything, go over the documents and everything else to make sure. It's just the fact that sometimes doing when you get into that 10 minutes before the hour, I'm still I'm getting the ice, I'm doing this, I'm putting my table there. I'm doing the same thing at that time. But just, and then I and but I can understand that because if somebody's taking a nap, you vision it's gonna be nine, it's gonna be ten o'clock to wake up with them. So what happened to the show? <laughs> be like, we wing we had to wing it. Yeah, it's, it's like, I was like, man, I was like, really? How'd you go? <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I, I do apologize about that. But for me, it's basically the best way I can describe it is if I feel if you ever seen a television control room where they're like, okay, go camera five, go camera three, okay, we gotta go do that, okay, go. That's what's going through my mind because the most important thing for me is to ensure that she is comfortable and that everything is smooth. Because to me, I think that whether you're acting, whether you are, you know, to be calm and to not have to worry about certain things and just to be like, however you work best. If you want to keep it loose, if you want to keep it a little bit spontaneous, spontane- to have that option. Because for me, it's worthwhile for me to go crazy behind the scenes if she has a show where she is focused, she's calm, and she doesn't have to worry about it. Well, it's just a smooth experience for her and hopefully also for Wanda. That, because to me, it's okay, we're here, okay, we're on it, okay, next one, okay. We're... And then it's about, it's about trying to tap, it's like, it's, like, it's like double dutch, just trying not to tap, step over your line. Okay, she's not talking, talking. Is it go that? Nope. Okay, she's not talking. Go now? No. Nope. It's about that, trying not to talk all over each other. So, that was a pretty long answer. <laughs> I love um, the long answer. But exhilarating. After the show, every time after the show, it's, it's almost like the curtain goes down and it's over. And then it's the after party. And then and I got to taste, I got to taste, man, these two babes, like it would be a Friday night. And I love the energy. I love the energy, but I would be hungry. So, we would have the show, we have the after party. <laughs> Then we have the conference call right after the show, and I'm sitting here. This is great. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> you know? 
It is in the well, middle of dinner time, really. Is. But, but the thing about it is, is everybody is so excited about it. It's, it's almost gonna be like, hey, to say I'm hungry, it just feels like a little bit rude. Until the other time we were doing that, and one was like, I gotta go get something to eat, y'all. Bye. I was like, that's all I had to say the whole time. I was like, man. She was just like, <laughs> she was like, which I understood, oh but I was just God. like, I used to be like, I'm gonna wait to eat. I'm gonna wait to eat. No, I think I'm, they were about to close mm-hmm. at night, and I had to get there before they close. No, no, that makes sense. It makes it makes sense. It definitely makes sense. Be like, feed him, feed him. Now, now, what are your favorite moments from the show? So, what, what favorite moments come to mind, ladies? I like all the moments. I think mm-hmm. from the first show all the way into the last one. I think the first show, I didn't really know what to expect. It's just like embracing all of it, right? So it's the mm-hmm. whole moment of the show in and of itself. And I think with the first show, for me, the thing that stands out the most is when I got stuck talking about Nicole Smith and her little bag of flour. <laughs> and that just that tickled my soul so much because and I had received so much feedback from people that know me personally that have called my phone like you are straight food. <laughs> it was mm-hmm. like, oh my God. They said we couldn't stop laughing because you was laughing so hard. I said, cause I in my mind I'm just the visual for me. And I just got so tickled. And then of course when the grandma came in and that was just like hilarious to me so it was just like it was everything it's so many memorable moments like giving the advice because the first show was dating 101 right we said ask the questions and don't be afraid to ask or do little tests and where should your first date be and all of those things and just just the response too i think the stage was lit as always but that night in particular because it was the first show and i think nobody really knew what to expect hell i didn't know what to expect to be honest Mm -hmm. but once you get settled down in it it, it's just a beautiful thing to see and i think like all the shows even dealing with life one-on-one and and us really bringing the grandma character and then you playing different characters from the back channel man (laughs) and all these other (laughs) and all these other people you Mm -hmm. know that come across and it's so crazy but it just shows the the range and it shows the creativity i think that all of us possess and then when you and wanda try to throw the little hook in when wanda came in talking about you gonna suck my toes tonight i'm like what the fuck i'm like (laughs) Yeah, and you messed the whole thing up because we did we kind of rehearsed that beforehand, and that's probably the after that we were like we're not doing that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was like, the hell is going on in here? So it was funny to me. Hey, Deanna, but it was funny to me so much when when y'all did that because I said, okay, they tried it, so we gonna let this, we gonna let them have this moment, and then we had. The special edition, which was so crazy, the Clubhouse High School, and then just coming up with the the characters, like the mascot doing the play, and Wanda think that she should have won the the singing contest and coming up with the mascot. But for me, it's all about the preparation before the show, the conversations that we have, the way that we're able to work so well together. And I think that's something that a lot of people can take note because there's no, it's no egos. It's no big U's and little eyes. You know what I'm saying? Or big eyes and little U's. It's like none of that. We just get the job done. We understand the assignments and that's how we attack it straight like that. And I think for me, because coming up, I played basketball Mm -hmm. and I also ran relay and track. So that's really all about teamwork, right? You can run individually, which I did too. 440 was my race, but I also ran the 440 relay, which means that you got to pass the what? The baton to your teammates. So that means it's, it's got to be a team effort. It got to be a well oiled machine, just like basketball. It can be the captain, yes, but the captain is only as good as the other four players on the course. And you have to know all the positions. And that's one thing that I appreciate about you, Ron, is that you make sure that I'm very aware of everything that's going on 
And Wanda is too, that we feed into each other just as we should, as far as performing, we understand what this is and mm -hmm. that's how we come and that's how we come at it. So all the moments and then Karma 101 was just, it was the shit, I must say. I enjoyed every facet of it. So if I had to pinpoint one, I couldn't, I must say all are my favorites and I, and I can't wait to see what else happens and where this will definitely take us. So I'm excited about it. Yeah, and I want to say, I don't know if I, if I have a favorite. I think I have some funny moments, but I think what I like best is that it, from the first show, I wanted, my vision was to see it like a TV show live and people were watching it. And it was good to hear that's what people felt. And that's what it felt like to me doing it. And that's what it felt like we were, we were on stage and people were watching us live. And so to see your vision, like when you do live theater, when people actually get your vision, that's an amazing feeling because you've accomplished your goal. And I feel like every show we've been able to accomplish that goal. And I feel like we've had some really funny moments that people get. And I think it's even harder for people to get it because it's not, they can't visualize, they can't see you. And mm -hmm. so the fact that people laugh and they get the back channel, man, they get grandma and they like those things. That's even harder to do, I think, on an audio app because you're trying to create a visual and you're trying to do comedy all uh, where people can't see you. And so I think that's a pretty difficult task. But I think we got, we were able, or we've been able to accomplish that. And I think that's been overall fun for me. To me, the, for the creation of the grandmother character, how, how that happened as we were preparing was interesting because I remember Wanda was doing something and she, we started hearing Dallas. And I think she was like, what you on the house phone? And I was like, oh my God, you took me back to high school when my grandmother would pick up the phone. I was trying to talk. I'm over here. Yeah, girl, I'm going to see you this weekend. Do, 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 do. I was like, oh my God. And it came from that. And as much as people have enjoyed it, I wanted to make sure that never got stale. Another thing that I'm, I, I enjoyed was just the hope, the different ways of bringing, I remember the first time it was like, Sheila knew, can you hear me? And then the doom, doom, Sheila, she rolled. Because <laughs> I you couldn't tell me I wasn't Maxi Priest when I was doing that. Anyway, but then also, like, I, I, I <laughs> have to tell that. you, I have to tell you, I, I do, I feel like, I feel like one of the ones that happened, it wasn't, it was in rehearsal where we were doing a skit and I said, and I have the utmost respect for everybody, but I said, we were, it was a thing where the green bean, it was the green bean battle where I was like, I was like, Wanda, you was like, oh, you want to say more than five words an episode? And let me tell y'all something, Wanda Rose and all her professionalism all her ladiness, all her genius, all her being professional. Man, honey, that went out the window because she was like, don't you say that? I was like, man, I mean, it was fire. And I was like, and I was afraid. And she was like, leave it in there. <laughs> and that was, it was just, it got so much, because for me, I was like, I, I wonder if I did that because, no, that's the thing, like Wanda a lot of times with these jokes, like she'll be like, if it's a joke on me, she'll be like, here's an elbow too. And here's a foot. And I was like, let's see how she, let's see how she like it. She didn't like it. Too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. And I cringe every time you say it. Oh my God. <laughs> why, do you, why do you cringe? Why do you cringe? It was because, because honey, when I said, when we said it that night, I'm talking about the audience hollering. And the joke was, <laughs> we all know you can talk and you do talk in different situations because you carry room before. But, <laughs> oh my god i have tears it i was, cannot it was great i mean i mean the fight like imagine, imagine <laughs> a woman who is a scholar and she is she's a lady she, and a scholar she, she's a lady and a scholar and she never wanted never let you see her sweat she was like she, uh, it, it was almost like nigga don't you say that Look, like, see you you brought the hood you brought the hood out of wanda that day I baby mean, so I know if I go there a dark alley with Wanda, I, I have no memory of that night. I really have no memory of this. Of what y'all talking about? I think, we I think that that would be called blacking out. For some reason, he for some reason he said every episode and she laughs. laughs. Cause it is, but it's but it's he's so smooth with it when he do it, and then when you catch it, it's like your head spin around. <laughs> Like, oh, that's wait. another okie dokie. I said, Wanda about to come off that mic, baby. You, you that, about to catch them hands. That catch is another, hands. See, that's another favorite amount. Like, when I listen, that, that last, last show, when I was sitting there, don't be doing this if you're a minister. And then your daughter caught a train. When I'm talking about everybody came off their mic and started chastising me, when I did it as clean as possible, oh my I was God. over here hollering. Because it was almost like, 
What do you mean? So you can't say that? I like listen. I don't gave you the clean version. Everybody got what I mean. And who hasn't caught a train? And I'm done. Y'all ain't never caught. See, these are the things that don't make the cut. I caught it, but I felt like I caught it during the show, and I felt like it was not necessary to talk about it afterwards. But I caught it. <laughs> but no, but I, I remember people came off the mic, was talking, it was like, Ron, you're going too far. She was like, Ron, what are you doing? I said, Sheila, what did I do? Because you never caught an Amtrak train before. Are you telling me that no you ain't gonna play? He tried. And he tried so like, hard to clean <laughs> stuff up. He really do, but he'll drop it and just run with it. And say, okay, I'ma see, and then you keep on going. I'ma see. Ain't nobody saying nothing. It's just like that little kid that I'ma get close to the stove. Ain't nobody saying nothing. I'ma get close to. The stove. I'm almost there. And then they get a side eye and be looking back, trying to see if you know a parent gonna say something. Okay, I'm there. I'm close. Oh, here's my little hand. It's almost. <laughs> Close to the eye. Oh my God. And then all of a sudden you get, ah, oh, what happened? Oh, your mama done caught you on the backside with that belt. Don't play no games. Look, you think you're getting away with something. You weren't getting away with nothing. But I'm, that was just you funny. I'm going to take you back to when we had the room about the books. And we were talking about that chapter. Remember that great chapter that Wanda wrote about the girl and the guy? They haven't seen each other. They go on a date. Then she go back to his house. She fall asleep. And then he wakes her up because somebody else called yeah. her. Yeah. I had all these women. Lying about here it is, America. Here's the situation. Okay, so basically, setup is that this man has a girl, they try to date her, whatever. Nothing happens, innocent, they don't commit to each other. Nothing happens. His ex girlfriend calls and says, I want to come over at three o'clock in the morning. Is she coming over to play Monopoly? No, she coming over to watch Harry Potter. No, she's coming over to do something. And I said, Ladies, I said, Ladies. If you was talking, if the guy you was hanging out with, he fell asleep on your sofa, so you know there's no action happening right now. And then a stallion called you, who you knew can get the job done. Would you not kick him out and let the stallion in? They was like, oh, no, we wouldn't do that. We would, that's not appropriate. What would I liar. say? Huh? But what did I say? You said you would get to going. You said that happened to you last week. That's what you told me. Isn't that what you said? No, that ain't what I said. <laughs> I said I would ask, I would say, did you need a pillow and a blanket because it get cold down here at night? <laughs> That's what I said. You could go back and listen to that, baby. That's what I said. You ain't stopping nothing over here. You done fell asleep on the couch. The couch is where you'll be. You ain't got to go home, but you ain't coming upstairs. We had all these very professional women with their fans, fan themselves, talking about, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. I was like, I don't believe you. But it was hilarious. It was hilarious nonetheless. I wrote the story, and I still don't agree with anybody that came up with their conclusions for the story. It's a great matter of fact. Pl- plug the damn book, Wanda. What's the call, people? Because you don't need to read this. Dating is for the birds. birds. Someone just sent birds. me an email, a, a text tonight that they finished reading the book, and they loved it. Somebody from Clubhouse that awesome. was it's heard awesome out. They read. bought it from one of our rooms. It's yeah. definitely an awesome read. Because you have it from both perspectives. Like when you have the woman, she's married to the guy, and then she goes off and she's hanging out. Her friend comes to town for her birthday. And then she just start all these nights of just hanging out and just being disrespectful to him. It's just, it just tears your heart out because you either have been to a situation like, oh, you've seen it play out. Or you can really feel for the person because it's, it's so visually written out for you. I think it's an excellent thing to talk about with a group of people if you have a book club or anything else like that. Now, let's move on to, do you have any superstitions? Do you have any rituals you do before before to ensure a great show? Of course, my ritual is <laughs> nap. So <laughs> do you ladies do anything? <laughs> <laughs> if I want a good show, get a nap in before the show. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't, I, don't have, no, I don't have any. I couldn't get off mute. I don't have any. Rituals beyond what I said, I make sure I stay close to home. I make sure I have everything set up. I put my phone on Do Not Disturb. I have my iPad up as well so I can get messages, even though it's on Do Not Disturb. It'll come through on the iPad so I can see, because sometimes we'll text each other. I, obviously, Ronald don't know about the Do Not Disturb. <laughs> obviously, I just saw that. And as I looked down and I saw that, I was like, I can't believe he on the phone. No, um, no, he's not on the phone. He's right here. See, Ron taking care of business. Look at you. Look at you. That little, that little red cool. thing popped up quickly. Yeah, real quick. Yeah, Two times. Don't be trying to tell her you'll be finished in a little bit. Oh, no. If it, if it was her, I'll be, I'll be sitting right here. She'll be sitting here on my lap. You know what, bye. Okay. I'm done. Okay. See, I'm, 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 that's I'm, I'm, his I'm, I'm, ritual. I'm, 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 that's his ritual okay, before okay, a show. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, as, that, my back will be hurting if I'm not I can Okay, so can I, I, can I finish? Open. Can I finish? Yes, yes Wanda, please. Thank you. I'll make sure the phone is on 
do not disturb with the iPad set up so I can see messages and we have to text each other in between because sometimes we have to text each other. I have to text and tell you guys you're going too long. The conductor doing a show sometimes to keep y'all on track. The other thing that I do before a show is I make sure that I have my computer charged and all of that good stuff. There's something else I do. Oh, I always text Ronald before a show to make sure he's awake. Yes, I, I, and I'm always awake. Cause sometimes I'm just, I'll be like, I'll be like, it'll fail, I'll be there. But again, I apologize for that because I, I don't like to do anything late. But I was always on the, just, I was always on the job. I was just getting that coffee ready. Now, now this is okay, no, okay. So let me do this now. Wanda, this question for Wanda. Now, what, when did the vision of a podcast come into mind? Because I remember you were talking about you were still like figuring it out. Like I think the idea came, and then I think you started doing research because you said something that. You were talking about when it's something that you don't know how to do, you do some obsessive research. It's like you have to find the answer to what you're looking to do. So talk about when exactly you think about doing the podcast and kind of how that journey went from the thinking about the idea to actually getting it done. I don't, I don't remember the whole process, but I remember thinking about it after the first show that it'd be really cool to change it and to turn it into a podcast. I don't even think I told you and Sheila like all the details until after it was done. And but then I just started doing research because it took me longer than what I expected to get it done just because it was time, just fig the first time was a little time consuming to figure out like which platform you want to use. So I did research on that. And I had done some research on podcasts before, but I did some research to see what was going to be the best platform. And then I think the hardest part was editing and figuring out how to edit, what was the best software to use for editing. So then I talked to a couple people I know who are on radio and they gave me some guidance on some editing software to use which ended up being Adobe has a really good software I use, but now I use an AI tool as well that allows the transcribes. So the whole podcast is actually transcribed into text and edited from the text as well. So I think it was really, that was, but it really was like another adventure to see it come to life and be able to see it go further than Clubhouse. Because if you can do one thing and then take it another, to bring it to another level, I think that's always awesome. So it, you take it beyond Clubhouse. So if it, Clubhouse is a really good platform for doing a podcast because you can record it and then you can take, download it and then you can edit it. And I, I don't think I gave you and Sheila all the details until y'all working on something, but I gave, so it was great when I could send it to you guys and say, hey, guess what? We have a podcast now. So that felt good to see you guys' reaction. It was a nice surprise. It was really a nice surprise. Absolutely, because it was something that I wasn't expecting. And Wanda's like a gift that keeps on giving. So that it was a beautiful thing. And just to see how much we've grown just on that platform or on those platforms alone has been remarkable to see. So I appreciate you so much for just having the foresight to do that and not just for for shits and giggles that we are actually just doing it because we are making people really sit back, laugh, and we bring some really thought provoking topics to the forefront. And I think that's, that's the comedic side in all of us is being able to show, Hey, look, this is funny. Yeah. But why is it funny? And what subjects are we that may be a little bit taboo, but we still address it. And now not just people who are in our sphere of influence, get to hear it but people who aren't even on this app get to hear it too which is great so i appreciate it 100 percent. now now i want to talk about having a theme for each show but here's the thing for me this is, cool. this is a question i'm wondering about because what i think about i know this is not saturday night live but when you think about it's live from new york it's saturday night it's saturday night live office politics i it feels like having a theme where there's karma dating love not being nasty it feels like it limits you. That is the initial thinking of it. And I do feel like it's challenging to have a theme to stick to that. You have to come up with enough stuff to stick to that theme. That really hasn't been a problem so far, but, but I have always wondered, Wanda, why a theme? Why do you, why do you feel like I have to have a theme or was it a challenge for, or was it just something to set it apart from other things? What was your thinking behind that? I really don't remember how we came. I think it started with the theme was because we started off with dating because I think this really was a spinoff room from the book, from the book when we did, um, okay. if we did the room about dating is for the birds. And I think you were the host for the, I should be the host when we did that. And then Sheila was there and Sheila was comic relief. And so I think, I think from that, I think that's how we started doing. We did say, oh, let's do dating first. 
And so I think after that, we just kept with doing themes. And I think theme, doing a theme, I think, gives you parameters for a show. So also, if you're doing like a TV show, you have a title for a TV show. So I think that's part of also having the themes for each episode. That makes sense. And I think, and that's was something when Wanda, when she came to me and asked me to do it or for this to be a thing, I think that's something that I encourage too, because this is an audio platform, right? So there's no face-to-face, person-to-person engagement. So from for me, from a comedic standpoint, there has to be some kind of content. And because I can't physically see people, we needed to have something that, okay, let's go with this, let's go with this, let's go with this. And it does, it helps with the premise and then people come in, they know what the title is. They still don't know what to expect. So there's still that element of surprise to it too. But you have to have some type of foundation or I don't think that it would it will run as smoothly as it would if we were just all up in here freestyling. Let's keep it a buck. We ain't no rappers up in here. So we ain't just doing bars. You know what I'm saying? So you want to have something that you can say hey this is what it is this is what we're talking about that's why we have times before we even bring the show to that date that we get to flush it out and see and understand what it should feel like what it should look like and then that way we deliver it the best way we know how and on this particular app so i think that's why it's important especially dealing with this type of social media app to have a basis to pull from. So then that way it doesn't get stale. And I think the other thing was that the theme was that because it's taped as like a live TV show, it doesn't matter if one person shows up or a hundred people show up. And in Clubhouse, you never know who's going to show up. And so I think that was important to me that we do that feel and it's a live tape show and people are just watching it. And we may hear laughter because somebody's come to watch it that night. But technically, people can watch it later. And if they don't show up, it's okay because it's our show and we're taping a show and people just happen to be watching it. But it really has felt good to have certain people that show up time and time again. That has been the best feeling. And again, it's a Friday night. You compare, you, you're competing with you competing with Tyrone maybe coming over. You're competing with the bar. You're competing with a lot of stuff. The weekend has started. So it really... For all the people that the faithful that kept coming back, it really means the world to us. Definitely, um, we could not. We're always grateful when people show up for the show and laugh, because that does provide some comedic relief for us, and it adds always adds to the show when you have people and you can hear the laughter, and it helps. I'm sure it helps Sheila. We have the response is always good to hear. Because Absolutely. That's the, hard, that's the harder part. Hard part people say about doing comedy on clubhouse. You don't have that same kind of reaction. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to know if some of these landed or not. <laughs> Now, okay, now we're here. This is, whoo, Lord, this is going to be a good one. Let's talk about the challenges of doing the show, crowd control. Let me preface this. While we appreciate everybody that shows up, the central premise of this was invite some people on the stage to feel free to unmike, to laugh only. But what happened, I think what happened is because it's Clubhouse and people are used to laughing and then commentary, we would get their commentary. Now, I said, because I'm going I'm to I'm I'm claim it. I'm going to say what I said now. I said, if anybody gets out of line, I'm throwing them down in the goulash. I'm kicking them off stage. I bragged that I was going to be the bouncer, the enforcer. But, honey, it's like, it's really difficult to see people show up and they say a little thing. And then it's, do I throw them off or not? Because, number one, first, listen, they don't have to be here. But they show up for us every single week. So it's so it's okay to give them a little chatter. But the central premise, and we have not been able to get this clear, is to get on the stage and just take your mouth off and laugh only. And we recently had people that would decide to give commentary to start to testify. It went from being a comedy show to being testimony. <laughs> I'm hollering. <laughs> I, I would mean no harm. Okay, okay Ronald. Okay, well, I started for the first show. We had somebody who came off mic. And so I think if people missed the instructions in the beginning, they come in, they may miss. Hey, and tell, the reason why we don't want a lot of commentary is because it's a tape show. And it's going to be a podcast. So that's the reason why. And then we don't want people talking over us and people don't get to hear us. So that's the reason. But we definitely want the laughter. And so I think it's always been fun. But from the first show, we had somebody come in and do commentary. Remember? 
No, it ain't just been the first show. So look at one. That was starting Wanda with the first show. Wanda he, is great. No, we yeah, she wait a <laughs> minute because he get he getting ready to take he getting ready to take it to the left. No, but no, yeah, no. we had somebody to just yeah because it took me completely off my square. I was like, wait a minute, what? Yeah, and then I was like, oh okay. And then you did what you were supposed to do. You understood the assignments. So you did what you needed to do and handled your business and all was right in the world. That's all I'm but saying. I didn't, no, but I didn't get every, I have not gotten everybody. Every show it's been where it's been a little, it's been a little bit of a noise. But, see, but that's why I'm bringing it up. I'm bringing it up not to complain about anybody, but to say it's very difficult. It was very difficult to be an enforcer because one, they're laughing, they're participating and they're doing it. So it's like trying to get a balance of it. And it's just that, we still hadn't kind of got that balance because this man, they show up, they're laughing hysterically, they're adding extra commentary, which we didn't particularly want. But it's like, how do you not get both of them? It never got too out of control. If it did, of course, you know who got penalized. <laughs> but that is, and then uh, that's the power thing, of editing. Another thing that was challenging is again understanding if the jokes lag, if the jokes landed. Like I, I have, I have, I have to say this. Because she is in the building. And Wanda, no offense to this one, but I got to tell you what she did for my soul. When I hit that first time where I said, I said, oh, Wanda, you want to say more than five words? Melissa started hollering, laughing. And I'm talking about, it was like, I was like, I made joke that land. I made joke that was good. I was like a little kid in the candy store. It was like, I did joke because it's a pretty big deal when a joke, when somebody laughing is funny. But when somebody just go, ah! It's a different, I don't know, maybe y'all get them all the time, but, you know, I have to count my blessings. You, you, blessing. you might get the lab, but yeah, it I might not be amused. at the appropriate see, time. Yeah. Yeah. I see he's very Two, amused. I, again, look, I'm talking, listen, I'm talking about, I was sitting there, I thought I was feeling good about myself that that day. So, were there any other challenges that you ladies have found with doing the show or that, because we're doing it on such a unique format? I think that is one of the biggest challenges because you never know what to expect. I think that's what makes us nervous. That's what made us probably the most nervous about the recording of the show. And that, but now that we're editing, we've been able to come with some of it doesn't matter because we can edit stuff out that we don't want anymore. We can, that we don't want. So I think never people that come in and do things unexpectedly. That's what kind of makes me nervous. Or other than that, I don't think there's anything that makes me really nervous. Just if people come in and it can do something unexpected that'll throw us because sometimes they'll throw us off. We've been thrown off before. Yeah, no, we have. But also just the, like the fact that people have, will be anticipating it and looking forward to it again, it's is I think it's a gift that I definitely won't take for granted. Now it's about time for my favorite part. The comedy bits that Ron was forbidden to do on the show. And I, oh boy, I I, 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 you're not gonna play. You're not gonna play the messages, are you? I'm not gonna play. I'm not gonna play the messages. No, I'm just going to describe to them what it was going to be. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I've been waiting for a long time to tell y'all this. So first of all, I sent this because a lot of times I pitch my jokes to Wanda and Sheila. I sent them a recording of what I was going to do, and first of all, they both told me they laughed, they hollered, but it was like Ron was too much. Now here's what the situation was. You know how if we're on stage and I'm talking to Sheila, whatever, I go on mute, go on mute, right? So I basically was going to do a bit where they were talking. I'm think I'm acting like I'm on mute. And I feel like I got two minutes before I have to get back on. And I'm in need. So I go ahead and I rub one out. And I actually go through the whole process of sounding it out from oh my God. just a whoo. Hence why he was not allowed to do it. Now, now listen, the average listener is like 40. Oh so my I'm like, God. Why can't I do this? Listen, if kids are listening to this, I don't think that's all because if they say mommy, like the only part I felt would be dangerous is if I did that and the kid said mommy, if a kid is riding with their mother and father and said, oh my God, daddy, that's the sound mommy makes when you're at work. You know what I'm talking about? Other than that, I felt like we were in the clear. You got people thinking Sheila was weird because Sheila, what happened to you? That yeah, I remember that. I remember Why? That. Well, you, no, remember is... you played it at your hairdresser? You didn't know what the message was. Oh yeah, she was like, "What is he doing?" And I was like, "Yeah, that's yeah. He's special. Don't even worry about it." And I, there's another one I didn't even pitch to you. I wanted to do a segment called a special segment. I feel like you have different podcasts and some of my mellow. I wanted to have Sheila on be a guest on my show called Getting Inside of You. And the entire time, 
I'm basically telling her how I'm turning the life down low. I'm encouraging her to lay back. <laughs> and all this stuff. See, ain't nobody <laughs> doing none of this. See, that part right there is you know, a no so, no. Listen, some of, I was beside myself. I said, ladies, I am pitching you what I feel like is great comedy. And then we just said, no, Ron, you can't do it. And I ultimately understand it because I think that she's in a classification on the podcast to have a certain to have a certain range to be consistent. So, but man, I was pitching that thing all kind of different ways. Well, what if I say it like this or say it like that? But they were not having it. They were not having it, y'all. So that that so those are some of the things that I wanted to do that never did. They got cut. They didn't make the cut for the show. But now what I want to do is I do want to read some of the feedback that we've gotten from from the listeners of the podcast. And some of the things that they're saying, because I think it's very touching. So I'm just going to read a couple of those. One of them was saying, I became hooked after one recent episode and promptly started at the beginning, currently binging and loving every minute. So thankful for the last as I look forward to more episodes. And fantastic podcast by a wonderful, entertaining, funny, insightful comedian. Her great wit and clever timing makes her a joy to listen to especially enjoying the meticulous approach to detail when acting out the quirky and extremely accurate impressions. Someone put, so I learned something delicious every episode. I love how they use that word. And I, <laughs> right. <that part. laughs> this ain't no uh, cooking show. <laughs> it was delicious. Delicious the way he was talking about something she even knew. Love the podcast. So nice to find a podcast that mixes a bit of humor into a serious subject in a tactful way. I don't always think to leave reviews for shows I love, but I want to go out of my way to leave a review to also say thanks to the host. So those are some of the those are some of the reviews that have been that people were so gracious to leave, and we really appreciate you for that. So thank you so much for leaving the reviews. Thank you so much, everybody, for for listening. And yeah, I love reading the reviews. I think it always gives you keeps you wanting to do more and to see what people think about the show. I think I forgot how many stars it has. It has. I think it's over 300. If you look at the rating for the show in podcasts. And yeah, 319. 319, yeah, 319, 319, yeah. So that's mm-hmm. pretty good. And it's not necessarily always about the ratings, but just the fact that people see the show. Right now it has, I think, over 8,000 downloads right now. And I want to get to 10,000, which I'm sure we'll get there. I think that's really cool to see that many people downloading the show. Absolutely. It's interesting because Comedy for me, and I said this before in private, comedy for me was something I was inferior to. I felt like it was something that I just could. I have so much respect for the art, first of all. I take it very seriously. I don't think it's definitely easy to do. And doing this has just awoken me to just to doing some things I never thought I would do. And now having an insight how to probably do them better and make the best of them, which has taught me one thing, not to be afraid. Not to be afraid. I don't like my fear on anything. But that was something that just stuck with me, and I don't think that I would have the perspective I have if it wasn't for you ladies involved in, me in, in this show. And, and for that, I am definitely grateful. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. I appreciate it. And that is, it says a lot, not just so much that people off the app listen, but the fact that they go to those lengths to leave a comment or two or three or four or five and rate the show. It's, it says a lot about the work that's being done here. And I like that people see that we're even poking fun at things that could be of a sensitive nature. But at the same time, my whole goal as a comedian is to get you to see it from a different vantage point and to let you know that it's okay to laugh at certain things and then get that release that you need so then that way you can move on and do what you need to do and maybe come at things from a different perspective altogether. So it's something that I definitely enjoy doing. I really appreciate just to have the opportunity to be able to perform here and then have it to be formatted and for people to listen to it as many times as they need to, want to, and then the anticipation for the next show, which is always great to to have the expectation of when's gonna when is the next show? Because I get asked that question all the time after the first show, after the last show is done and it's a wrap. 
I get people asking me, so when's the next one? And I'm like, just hold on a minute. <laughs> I said, it's coming. It's a work in progress. We don't have things flushed out so far in advance because I like to tackle things when it's fresh. We'll flush out the idea, maybe the title, but then there's then the work, the real work begins before we come to this platform to put it all together for everybody. But just but just keep listening, keep sharing it. A lot of times I don't hype up a lot of things. In this particular instance, I'm passionate about it. So share it out, share it with your family. Now, if your children are under the age of 13, they need to mind their business. This is not for them. I promise <laughs> you that your 13 year old are her much worse Okay, so they can hear this too. It's funny. And then it may open some dialogue for you to have conversation, much needed conversation with your young people. So then they can find the laughter and humor in life, but it gives you a great icebreaker to be able to maybe talk to them about some sensitive subjects. If your daughter does go on the first date, tell her, take a man to the doctor's office, y'all make an appointment and get checked out because she don't want them problems. He don't either. And that's vice versa. So that's my two cents. You take me back to something my mother did. My mother would show us, she would watch some very, like some, there was different R-rated movies that she would watch with us that had certain messages, but she would, we thought it was cool who was watching an R-rated movie. But then she would explain to us the reason why she showed it to us and have a dialogue with us. And that carried a lot of weight because as I walked away from the subject matter, I had a perspective of what to do, what not to do, why it was, or whatever have you. And that really did make a difference. So, so when you said that, it, it really struck a chord with me. So I think very well said. Oh. No, I was going to add, when we talk about the show, and one thing people always ask, is it script? Is it a scripted show? And it's part scripted, part not scripted. Because a lot of times we may have talked about it and fleshed out areas that we're going to talk about, but it's definitely not something we're reading line by line. And a lot of times, Ronald and I may be more scripted than Sheila is because she may not even know what we're going to say sometimes. Or we don't know where her reaction is going to be. So I think that's what makes the show a lot of fun. Absolutely. That's the best part for me. That is the best part for me because I think creatively, I think especially being a stand-up comedian, sometimes it's what comes off the cusp. It gets the greatest reaction. So when you're not held to certain parameters or whatever the case may be, it gives you the creative freedom to do and to be all that you need in order to get the laugh that you want, not just for the audience, but for me too. Cause I'm in here cracking up as we're doing the show. I love it. And it keeps that energy high and it gives you what you want out of the show. So I think that's a, it says a lot about both of you, just being able to have the ability to be able to perform without a whole lot of restrictions. It's a plus and a plus. So I appreciate that. So thank you. And I had to think about, I thought about another moment that I really liked from the show. We had the singing competition and Wanda was up. Wanda really took that moment with the song and she really just, she killed because I know she was making it sound badly. But it was the way she did it and the confidence and then the length that she took with it. That was like, that was impressive because I, I was like, man, she's really doing this thing. So I had to give you credit for that because that was excellent. And then also I noticed also with Wanda was like, we do certain skits and I would put the skit there. When she would read them, it would take a couple of seconds before she was like on point with it. You know what I'm saying? A lot Because a lot of times the skits, if you don't hit the mark with the joke, you can't, whether you're setting up the joke or you are the joke, if you don't read it right, or you don't have the right tempo, it could get missed. And within a couple of seconds, you always just adjust to it and we'll just be going on. So that was also inspiring to see and, and to go through. So I, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Listen, it looks like that is about all the time that we have. So I think I'm going to give to any closing remarks that anybody wants to say. Of course, I will let the ladies go first. So we will start first with Miss Wanda Rose. Well, I thought you were going to say she'll go first. I just want to say it's been awesome doing the first season with you guys and doing the special. We had season one with a special edition, which was Clubhouse High. And now we have this behind the scenes show that I think people are going to love when they get to hear it. They can hear it on Clubhouse. They'll be able to hear it on the podcast. But I think this has been a really cool show to do. And I can't wait for season two. Season one was awesome and amazing. And we have some other things coming but I think season two is going to be even more spectacular 
And I can't thank Ronald and Sheila definitely enough for making this so much fun and bringing something to life that people can see and making people laugh. So thank you. And I'd just like to say thank you. Thank you all for just always tapping in, tuning in. Thank you for the comments that you leave. Thank you for helping us run these numbers up. Run them up. Let's get it. Let's go. You already know how we do. I absolutely, this is something that I love. I'm often asked about me being a stand-up comedian. And a lot of times we go through life and we don't know what our calling is or what our giftings are. And I, for one, can say I do. Comedy is something that is in me. And to be able to share the laughter among my peers, among family, friends, strangers, it's a com. It's a. It levels the playing field, right? Laughter is medicine, and it's and for me, it's the best medicine. And for me to be able to deliver that medicine in the doses that you receive just makes me happy from the inside out. It releases all kind of good energy positive endorphins and it allows you to clear your heaviness so you can get to what you need to get to. So I appreciate you all. And yeah, stay tuned, tap that link, stay in touch with us. We got big things to come. We're always working to be better than the last episode and we don't have no other place to go but up. So thank y'all for just tapping in with us this evening. I appreciate the behind the scenes, honey, because you get all the tea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so, it, hey, this is what we do. And this is why we do it, just to give people a, a high level overview of what it takes to put a show like this together. So thank you, Wanda, for having the foresight to say, come on, let's do something. And thank you, Ronald, for lending your comedic genius to the show it is definitely appreciated and i can't wait and like i always say this ain't goodbye this is see you later i thank you ladies so much for having me i thank everyone so much for listening thank you so much everybody for the feedback they've given their attention just for the downloads just for everything because and for anybody who is listening to this that is dealing with something they may feel like they are inferior of or they feel like they can't do give it a try like really give it a try even if you have to write something and it'd be bad and then you try it again, just because what I learned specifically with trying to create things, whether it's writing or performing, is that once you get your head around it to come up with your own technique, or your system, it becomes a lot easier. Now, where you rank is different, but for you to have an understanding of a way to do it, it would take away a lot of the confusion and then the intimidation. So I definitely should try that because I would have never done this had it not been for this opportunity. And, and I'm learning a lot from that so thank you all so much for attention thank you so much for listening to the podcast we hope that you've enjoyed it and we are going to go we're going to be out in five four three two one